Hey everyone, it was a quiet week, Artemis-wise, uh, not a lot of news to report on. Um, I had been planning on and am working on a production status video of the Artemis 2, 3, and 4 hardware uh, in process for those flights uh, at, for the rest of the decade. Um, but I talked with somebody in uh, NASA Moon to Mars at the end of the week, and there's some interesting information in there. Uh, I'm writing a story for NASA Spaceflight, NASASpaceflight.com on that, um, and then I'll need to cut it back into the production status video. So um, those are things that'll come up hopefully next week. Um, in the meantime, there was an RS-25 test, the Retrofit 3B test series um, is uh, close to wrapping up. Uh, this was the 10th of 12. And so um, let's take a look at that. And there were a couple of other news and notes for the rest for the week. But uh, as I said, it was a fairly quiet week. But let's go ahead and take a look at the RS-25 test. This was the 10th test in the Retrofit 3B test series being conducted at Stennis Space Center with a total of 12 planned. Here are the test dates so far for the current series, which is the last planned for certifying production of new RS-25 engines for the SLS core stage on launches beginning with Artemis 5. Both halves of the Retrofit 3 test series use engine 0525, one of the ground test only development engines inherited from the space shuttle program. Retrofit 3A was a set of five hot fire tests conducted between December 2021 and March 2022. As the name implies, the engine was retrofitted with new hardware built from restarted engine component production. About the only heritage shuttle elements left of engine 0525 are the main power head pieces, the hot gas manifold, and the injectors, the main injector and the two pre-burners. The test ran for a duration of 500 seconds from the engine start command to shutdown command. And so then we can see the start command and we can see the engine start up and you can see it start up to 100% and then it throttles up this time um, up to uh, in this test, they were talking about going up to 113% of was the max power setting, but it's also possible that they uh, throttled up uh, initially to 111, which is going to be the uh, maximum in-flight power setting for the production restart engines. You can see, you could also see the the um, the burn off the the burn off swing arms uh, swing out of the way. Then you can see during the firing, this is a this was a 500 second long test. You can see these steam clouds generated, which uh, which the the coverage uh, focuses on. It's one of the focuses of the coverage, um, and this is the water that's being dumped, uh, the water deluge that's being dumped into the um, sprayed and dumped into the flame bucket. Uh, the engine vaporizes a lot of that water. The water for the flame deflectors is supplied from a high-pressure industrial water plant that is inside the AB test complex and includes a reservoir of water, as you can see here in this image from this aerial image of the area. The, the circular storage reservoir the plant is adjacent to holds water pumped from the center's canal system. In this view, the A2 test stand can be seen behind the water plant on the left, and the dual position B test stand can be seen on the far right. The reservoir allows for water to be pumped into the flame bucket for a long time prior to engine ignition, and then obviously throughout the test and after shutdown. We did see a, a short throttle down and throttle up sequence here around 195 seconds to 100 to 205 seconds. Again, this looks, looks very similar to uh, something that I'd mentioned in a previous test about the quote unquote bolt bucket that they fly on SLS um, around the solid rocket booster separation. 
there may have been other throttling of the engine um, or other throttle buckets where uh, there is the engine is throttled down to 80% for shutdown. That's the nominal the plan for these tests. Um, and I'll, I'll get back to that when we get to the shutdown part of the, of the uh, test. But that was the only uh, major throttling we see. There's, you see the engine start, the engine starts 200%, the throttles up to uh, max power for the, either for the flight or for the test. And so, which could be a little different. So it may, uh, it may have throttled up to 113 versus 111, which will be the n normal flight maximum power setting. Um, we saw this short throttle down and throttle back up around 195 seconds to 205 seconds. Most of the time that we saw it during the test, the engine was throttled um, at that at that high throttle setting of either 111 or 113 percent. In the past, NASA Stennis has, on rare occasions, but NASA Stennis has shown other engineering camera feeds, uh, most memorably in a green run test of engine 2063 back in 2017. Uh, if we take a look at some of that footage, we can see that shots were provided during the live test uh, inside the blockhouse or in, you know, it's all, it's called the test control center. Um, but we also saw uh, we saw views, we saw camera views from inside the test control center like this during the test. And we saw, we saw at least another view of the, of the, uh, of the engine during that 2017 test. And so there are other views and you can see in the blockhouse video, there are other, there are other cameras that they can look at to see other parts of the engine. Uh, but Generally speaking, we only see these two views from the from this camera, which is 442, or from the uh, 503 camera, which is you know which is looking at one side of the uh, power head. Uh, we, we did get a little bit of a longer look at the engine uh, during the shutdown sequence and after as the shutdown purges come on um, and helium is pushed through different parts of the engine to evacuate as much of the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen as possible. Um, it's, all, it's, it's not just for safety purposes to make sure that uh, nothing pops inside the engine components, but also to try and begin to evacuate as much moisture or things that could cause moisture to accumulate um, to purge all of that out of the engine um, as much as possible. One of, the, one of the automated procedures that's been added to these SLS RS-25 ground tests is a, a non-emergency safe abort procedure. Um, this was implemented after a couple of tests in the 2018 timeframe that ended early because of uh, issues with uh, ground infrastructure. The test had to be aborted. The engine had to be shut down from a high power level, and that increases the risk of uh, hardware damage. It doesn't guarantee hardware damage. It just, incre it just increases the risk. And so this was something that they uh, instituted after that, which is in the case of a test being aborted, the engine will first be throttled down to minimum power level, which which is 80% for both the production restart engine and for ground tests in general. And then the engine is shut down. So it's an extra step. It does not take very, it does not take that long to throttle the engine down from 111 or 113 or 109%. There were a couple of tests, as I mentioned, there was a one test in uh, August of 2018 that, that shut down um, around, I think, six minutes into an eight minute test. And then there was another test at the end of 2018 in the December timeframe where the engine, um, some test equipment, um, there was a leak in some, in some uh, 
test equipment, which caused uh, a fire to flash from that test equipment. And so that, that test was shut down um, less than a minute into the test. And so uh, after that, they, they, they added this uh, quote unquote non-emergency safe abort procedure. A couple of items to note, both from SLS. First, some imagery of the development test article of the Universal Stage Adapter arriving at Marshall Space Flight Center was released by NASA, along with an article that noted this first of two test articles was being delivered to Building 4619. That's where the structural test articles for two core stage elements were tested, the engine section STA and the inner tank STA. NASA's article news article also noted that this test article has intentional flaws in its construction that will be subjected to modal testing and ultimate load testing. A structural test article for the USA proper is the next to be delivered to Marshall for testing prior to the first flight of the Block 1B vehicle on Artemis 4. The USA will be the connecting adapter between Orion and SLS for crew configurations of the Block 1B and Block 2 vehicles. Another set of pictures and an article from Marshall were released on Thursday by NASA, highlighting additional Block 1B development work on the payload adapter that will be used on the Block 1B crew vehicles to support co-manifested payloads that will fly with Orion to the moon. That's the Gateway IHAB module on Artemis 4. But the picture of the PLA test article also provided a visual update for one of those things I've been auditing, so to speak, for the production status video, which was the Orion stage adapter for Artemis 3. Regardless, there it is in this picture taken in late January with OSA2 and the PLA test article. I'm guessing it's the one to the left, given it doesn't have an installed diaphragm, which the one on the right does. This is the first look at OSA3 in a couple of years, maybe more.